welcome back to episode 16 of Turn Bark Time. I'm the Turn. I'm the Bark. We're going to be here a long time. Welcome. This is episode 16, and this is a four content video. So this week, our eighth graders are going to be watching, uh, hopefully, these videos and uh, doing some work in a nice little PowerPoint that Mr. Barker has put together uh, on the topic of Barker. Manifest Destiny. Fantastic. So Manifest Destiny is a term that's first coined by, I believe, John O'Sullivan in 1845. He is a, uh, who's the editor for Barker? He's a newspaper editor. Uh, the Democratic Review and the Morning News. Okay, so he was the editor for that. He coined the term Manifest Destiny and basically what he was describing in this is it was our job to manifest our destiny to spread across the continent. It was America's destiny, divine right, to go from sea to shining sea. So it's important when, when Turner says divine right, you know, it means like, you know, I always think of like the Crusades where if you watch, uh, what's the great movie? Kingdom of Heaven with Orlando Bloom. Uh, yeah, the big the big phrase that whenever they're going to do something, they're going to go murderize somebody. They're like, God wills it. You know, yes, yeah, God wills it. And then off they go. And that's kind of the, the it's, it's almost like the white man's burden in America. You know, it's this idea that we've got to get rid of the, the natives have the land, but they're not using it right. We're going to, you know, they're not farming. We're going to, it's uh, very democratic, like Jacksonian democracy moving west, small farmers, Kind of going back, shout out to, you know, Tommy J, Thomas Jefferson, Seriously. and his his view for America. Um, they get a lot of support from the Democrats and the Southern politicians to move west. The industrial north is kind of like, don't do that. Uh, because then the question becomes, when we start adding new states, we have to start talking about that age-old question. So no, America don't. just wants to pretend that doesn't exist. Yeah, first rule of that, you don't talk about it. <laughs> Second rule of that, don't talk about it. it yeah, for, what is it, at least 20 years after the Constitution signed, then you can talk about it again. Um, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about slavery, obviously, uh, is one of the big things here. Third rule, <laughs> fight a war over it. Yeah, it usually solves all your issues. Uh, one of the things that, that you brought up that I think is really interesting is you talk about natives, and they're all the other thing is there's also um, other powers, other countries that claim the areas that are our divine right to go and take over, and this is going to lead. This is this isn't something that just happens. Like manifest destiny isn't something that happens over three years and we move on to the next thing, right? Like we talked about the Federalist period being a, a eight year period. This is actually, Manifest Destiny is something that's going to start in about 1803, and we will completely go full circle. It's like 1854 with the Gadsden Purchase, something like that, I want to say. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking uh, at least 50 years that this is this process is going on. And I, I would make an argument that it continues, right, with the you know annexations of Hawaii and Alaska um, or the purchases of Alaska and the annexation of Hawaii and then other territories that we have. So we're continuing. And then you can make an argument even for the moon, <laughs> like, <laughs> even though we don't technically own the moon. I was listening to somebody say that that was going to happen at some point today. Um, like a not, not crazy person, but, um, <laughs> I read something when I was researching for this episode, a legitimate person, a legitimate person okay. not the guy from the history channel that I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. That's, that's Thursday's episode, by the way. Um, uh, but anyway, they were saying that, like, by, I think it was, like, the 1840s, like, 40% of the United States, like, lived west of Appalachia, you know, the Appalachian Mountains, sorry, um, which, is a, which is a big shift, because it used to be, you know, America was essentially the Appalachian Mountains to the coast, yep. you know, and so that was a big, a big shift. Um, so, oh, we're kind of talking about all this stuff, I'll put the map behind me, so... Appalachians would be like right here where the dark green ends. You can't see my mouse, but it's there. Um, you know, just like all of those uh, government government microphones, they're there, but you don't see them. Um, but you know, this kind of breaks it down, like we were talking about. So you have the Louisiana Purchase, you know, good old Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea, Sacagawea, you know, Sacagamama. Um, Easy. <laughs> don't want to say, talk too much about each one because we're gonna do that later in the week. But, yeah. uh, you know, we get a steal. And I always talk with my students about this is 
thinking about countries is like power rankings in college football. You know, like when we start our time period, Spain is the number one, the top team in the country, in, in the world, you know, most powerful. And then like they lose the battle of the English Channel and then they start dropping in the top 10 and Britain begins to rise. And then you have France, you know what I mean? And this is, you know, Louisiana Purchase is one of good old Napoleons over there, you know, a mover and shaker. But as Spain declines, you know, that kind of opens the door for, well, Mexican independence. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years later, America slaps Mexico in the face and steals half of it. But yeah, story for another day. Yeah. So, again, taking a look, like you can kind of see the different areas that we've gained over time. And by we, I am referencing the United States. Uh, the the concept here, though, was not necessarily Native American, like like Barker brought up earlier. You're not talking about, you know, Native Americans getting their land equally paid for and everything like that. They, all the negotiating or wars are fought or, or, or salary or whatever, money given out for to the, the European countries or in this case, like a, a recently uh, independent country from being Mexico from from Spain and the reference point that Barker's making like at the time Britain's still the number one right and one of the big things here is that's happened is when O'Sullivan's written this in you know 1845 saying that we hey we should need to spread from sea to shining sea to shining sea you can see right there like we're still dealing with like debates in Oregon we'd be dealing with uh the Mexican-American war that hasn't happened yet and we were debating to annex Texas Texas at this time and one of the things that he claims that we've we've kind of moved forward through is the War of 1812. So everyone's like, "Holy crap, you're gonna try and do this to Britain?" But we, the his thought is that the America survived the War of 1812. Um, some Americans believe they won. I would. That's another episode for another time. But the only winner of the War of 1812 was Canada. Everybody else, and the only loser of the War of 1812 was the Native Americans. So again, sea to shining sea. Uh, this is the map of how we become the nation we are today. And so what we're going to spend a lot of time during the intro this week, keep popping around your screen, uh, we're going to look at a painting called American Progress, painted by John Gast in 1872, I believe. Yep. So after Manifest Destiny is done, again, with history, a lot of the great depictions of events that are done in art are not made during the immediate time period. You know, I mean, Manifest Destiny has been out for 30 years, three decades. People are still moving west. They're, you know, the, the flow of people moving to the west is still happening. Um, but you have this kind of angelic being in the center of the picture that the artist Gast calls progress. Um, you know, moving in the picture from what should be from left to right. Is that right? Yeah. 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 It's backwards on my, when looking at it, it's backwards. So you have to kind of think about it in your brain. If it was sitting, she's no. moving from your right to your left, actually, if it was sitting in front of you, yep. which on a map would be moving from generally what we call east on the right hand side to the west on the left. And it's funny how we take for granted those cardinal directions that way. Um, but our students, you're going to be looking at this picture in a lot more detail in the PowerPoint uh, kind of mousing over the different elements of the painting, clicking on them, and I've got we we put some little details or some questions in there for each one. I think there's 11, 11 different buttons to click, eleven other slides other than the main picture. Yeah, and what's great about this? Sorry, I'm changing my background to the picture too, um, and it looks like mine is flipped the wrong way, but that's okay. Uh, it'll work so that way at least you can kind of see on both pictures i can't move myself out of the way because i have a macbook and not a windows like barker um where he has a, a better editor and i haven't spent the time to look but what you what you see here is is a very interesting depiction and one of the the biggest things that i feel like students it's really fun to do this with students like this is actually one of my favorite units to teach because History Live, TCI, whatever you want to call it, actually does a really cool thing, and kids get to kind of act out some different scenarios. But the the best thing I like about this painting, and usually there's that one kid in your class that kind of has been looking at the photo but hasn't said anything, and they're just sort of staring at not, and I shouldn't say photo, painting, and they're staring at, staring at, and then the one kid raises their hand and goes, 
wasn't one side light and like the light is coming across the picture and you're like, oh, yes, yes. And I mean, that's that's one of the biggest pieces here is that you look, right, and the sun is in the east, right? And where does the sun rise? Sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So again, this west area, right, this area of Louisiana, um, the Mexican-American War sessions, we call it the Mexican session, and the Oregon country are all considered dark because they're uncivilized. And again, civilization is a relative term. It's a term we use as uh, usually Anglo uh, people use that term to describe an area that doesn't practice or behave or live the same way as they do. So, and one of the things we can stress really any about any culture we talk about is most of the time when, when Europeans show up to a place, they think the culture is uncivilized, but it's actually one of the most like, it's really complicated structure in which they are going to to have their societal rules and things like that. And, and that rings true for Native Americans. They have, they have really strict societal rules and, and the way systems that way people work. And you can make an argument that Native Americans are really the first socialists. You know, they take care of every single person. So. Uh, well, it's interesting that you mentioned, like we talk about Mexico being like not civilized and it's, there's this disparity between, there's always kind of a negative connotation between the United States and Mexico and like Latin America for that point. From, for that point and a lot of that stems from the animosity between speaking a different language and being a different sect or a different flavor of christianity yep. right everything from mexico south for the mo well, not everything but for the most part those countries were settled as spanish-speaking catholic countries or portuguese hashtag brazil um you know and so that that creates being children of two different mothers creates the animosity in that that you know, kind of conflict initially. And we still see, we still see tremors of that today. Yeah, absolutely. And it, again, as it, it was interesting, I was watching this show uh, on Netflix, shout out to Netflix called, um, it's called a hundred people. And they do these different things with a hundred people. But one of the things they do is they actually have a, uh, they're trying to figure out who's the more vain sex men or women but they, they judge themselves off of how attractive they think they are versus attractive they think other people are. And it was really fascinating to hear um, some of the brain science behind it. And one of the brain science things is our brain likes things that, that we recognize, that we like, or that we like when we things we recognize. And so, again, when somebody speaks a different language than you and that's your first impression of that, you know, it's really hard to, to shake that – I don't know how to describe how I guess I would describe the feeling as um, I wouldn't describe it as inferior, but I describe it as like intimidating to me. That would be like when somebody's when somebody's speaking another language and that's the first thing I hear, I'm like, oh crap, I'm not gonna be able to communicate with this person. Like that's my it, you could argue that it's like a it's a natural or societal like defense mechanism. Right. And so so it's 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 interesting, like again, when we talk about Mexico, right? Like Mexico is a sophisticated system, they have an emperor. At the time, you know, even though they don't really have any land they conquered, but they have an emperor and they have, you know, or president, depending on what day of the week it is for him. Um, and, and you know, so we look at it and say, OK, that's not how it is. And the same thing will happen in the War of 1812. I know I said I'd jump over it and I'll try and not talk as much. But uh, we th the Americans think in the War of 1812, I think it was – was it Thomas Jefferson or Benjamin Franklin? I think it's Thomas Jefferson said – the conquer, uh, conquering of Canada was a mere matter of marching. Like, they thought that we'd just show up in Canada and everyone would be like, woohoo, we're American now. No, it's not true at all. <laughs> so, and Canadians defended themselves, right? We were the invader. Again, if you got Amazon Prime, go watch Canada, the story of us. It's pretty interesting. So. Also interesting that, you know, the people of, you know, Texas, people that were Texians or Tejanos or yeah. Tejanas, um, you know, people who were in Texas before Texas became a state, became, when, it, when, it, when it became independent, right, that they have this identity that Tejanos and Texians are different than other Mexicans or other Americans, which is where you kind of get that, you know, don't mess with the Lone Star State kind of mentality. Shout out to Miss Zamoran, um, our own very, you know, our Tejana in the building. Yeah. So, um, you know, identity is a very powerful thing. I talked with my students about 
Mexico had a very stratified um, kind of racial system of how, who could do what prior, you know, right early on in Mexican history. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's nobody's, nobody's perfect. But anyway, back to this painting. We're going to yep. spend a lot of time talking about it. And then next week, we'll actually talk about the different acquisitions of like Louisiana, Florida, Texas, Oregon, and the, the Southwest. It's seven different states, but yeah. So, uh, but again, like really, so going back to the picture, because now we're, you know, him and Barger and I are good at bird walking, but we'll bring it back. So if you're looking, right, like take a look. My favorite things to look at in this painting are obviously the natives jump out at me first, uh, the buffalo uh, and the other, the other animals. Um, but then look at what uh, progress is like carrying, right? Look at those trains that are coming. Right. What are the, the people doing? What do they represent? Right. And you have to kind of you'll have to read to, to really understand what what we're talking about. So in lesson, uh, I think this is lesson 15, I believe. Yeah. Lesson or chapter. Chapter, lesson, whatever. It's unlocked for you guys. So you guys can take a look and and go ahead and read and, about each of these. So. Anything more? Uh, well, this video will drop. It'll be tomorrow. Woo! It'll be May the 4th, so I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. One of the few ones that I have that doesn't have green on it, or it's black, mm. where I fade into the background. So shout out to my nerd dumb. May the 4th be with you. Yep. And the day after that, we'll see the revenge of the 5th. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, I, I hope you guys are, are staying safe out there and stuff like that. We miss you guys. I, got to, I ran into a former student on my walk today with my dog, and, and you know, just know that we miss you guys and we wish we were back at school teaching you this stuff in the classroom. So if nothing else, I'm the turn. I'm the bark. We're going to be here a long time. Take a look on Thursday. History of UFOs. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Stay safe. And be well.